die Konflikt. Bloody Fields. Bloody Cold. Bloody War. When I was asked to write a piece about Lincoln, I really wasn't sure what angle to take, you know, in uh, composing this work. So I uh, thought it'd be best to just use the words of Lincoln himself. And so I spent months and months reading, you know, Lincoln's letters and his speeches and so forth. But then that's, that seemed abstract to me. So the real breakthrough for me is when I went to Gettysburg and I spent several days walking around the battlefields and just walking around and thinking. And then suddenly that melody hit me you know, four score and seven years ago. That tune hit me with those words, and then I started to really get going on the piece. Let's just give it a buzz and see what it sounds like. Four score and seven years ago. Michael Daugherty is a, is a wonderful professional and, and wonderful composer and extremely experienced, and I'm, you know, I'm an old singer on the block, so we knew the task at hand, and I, I, we were on the same page from the get-go, and I was just anxious to see what he was going to write. In the end, it was really the words of Lincoln that inspired me to write the music. You know, there are some works that happen written about Lincoln. Uh, most of them tend to be speeches, and what I wanted to do, I think which makes my piece very different, is that these words are sung and there's a dramatic element to the words uh, that are musically evoked. Um, what was very challenging was how to take these words and somehow give them a shape and structure. Write something that's meaningful but is not too sentimental and, and at the same time to, to give it the edge and to give it the historical power that Lincoln's words have. I'm profoundly moved by this man's life. I'm profoundly moved by his use of the English language. I think it's some of the most beautiful, uh, metaphoric, symbolic writing that, that we, we have. One of the things I wanted to do was to evoke the certain sides of his personality. So, so during the piece, we, we hear the humor, and he was a guy that was, that was very funny. But at the same time, there was a very sad side to, to his life and a, and a very private side. So that comes through, for example, in, in, in the letter to Mrs. Bixby. It's, it's a much more personal, much more tragic side that one, that one hears. And then um, there's also, you know, Lincoln as the great speechwriter. So in the work, The Mystic Chords of Memory, we hear the first inaugural address, which is one of the greatest speeches of all time. And uh, of course, the Gettysburg, which is the Holy Grail. But nevertheless, you know, this is a document about our time. And our time is a, not just a searching, it is a conviction that we must search. And we must pay attention to deeper values than any one particular sect, religion, or, or party would represent, but are the very substance of what this country is about and has always been about. What I've tried to do is to contemporize Lincoln's thoughts. By doing that musically, one of the ways I've done that is in today's music, I'm a generation of composers who's not afraid to use different kinds of musical styles. And so to evoke Lincoln, I'm using music from the Civil War period, but I'm using opera music, I'm using contemporary music. Uh, there's elements of, uh, of jazz sometimes, or even rock, and all put together in a way to take the words of Lincoln, but put it into the present day. And I think this piece is a culmination of things I've been doing for about 20 years of my music. And uh, I want to thank and uh, commend the, uh, Spokane to even think about commissioning this piece about Lincoln. In fact, it's really the only major arts or organization in the United States that has commissioned a piece for the Bicentennial Lincoln. It's been a wonderful collaborative process. I don't think we've, I don't think we've left any stones unturned. I think we've done, we've done a terrific collaboration.